In this tutorial, I'd like to demonstrate how to construct a stem and leaf plot when the numbers that you're plotting have more than two number places. Up until now, the examples that we used have typically had just two number places. For example, a tens and a ones. One example had three number places, that being a hundreds, tens, and ones. But even in that case, the hundreds were restricted to zero and one. So we just combined that to tens and made, made it then you know, 11 tens and 12 tens for our stems. Well, here we have numbers for home prices, and there are 88 different cases. And we just can't simply construct very easily a stem and leaf plot when we have six number places for our numbers. What we're going to show you how to do here is how to trim off some of the numbers to the right hand side of the numbers in order to reduce what you have down to two places for constructing your stem and leaf plot. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to identify the minimum value and also the maximum value so we get a sense then of what stems we need to have equal min for the min function, highlight the data range, and the smallest or the least expensive house here is $111,000. We'll use the max function in the same way to find the highest value or price for a house here in this, these data, and that's $725,000. Now what we're going to do then is trim the last four digits off of these numbers, so we're only left with the first two digits. So let me go over here and label this column D as trim. So it's the trimmed, I'll put trimmed, so we know that it's the trimmed values of these houses. And we're going to use the left function. The left function identifies only use the left characters or numbers that are entered in the cell that we reference. So the left function is equal left parenthesis, and now I'm going to identify the cell where I'm trying to trim that off, and I'll put comma, and now I'll enter the number 2, and we'll hit the, pre the close parenthesis key, and what we've seen we've done here is now only retain the two, the two most left numbers in that digit. Let's go in and show what happens if we actually made that then 3 for the criteria there. Now it reports the three most left numbers. If we put in four, it reports the four most left numbers. What if we just put in one? It's only the one most left number, left most number. Let's go back to two because we want to have two digits here. I'll come down, highlight the entire data range, or drag it rather and copy to the entire so the entire data range is contained here. And you'll notice, for example, what happens here, look at case number 88, house number 88. It takes the $725,000 price of a home and lops off the four rightmost numbers, so we're left with just the two most leftmost numbers, that being 7 and 2. It doesn't round, it just trims them off as though you're cutting a branch. Wherever your saw is, the branch is going to cut off everything to one side. Just as we see here, $713,500 for house price, it just retains only the 7 and 1. And this is the idea of trimming, just cut off everything beyond that second digit. Now what we see here, the first numbers place that we have, the 1s and the second, the 10s, uh, for our trimmed values now, we can easily identify that the 7s or the 10s is going to be our stems, and the units or the 1s, the two in this case is going to be our leaf or our leaves for the entire graph. So let's now go over here and let's start to construct then our stem and leaf plot. I'll just type it right here and I'll put in the header stems and then the header leaves. And what we have here, if you recall, and let's go down to the bottom, and we can even copy then our minimax over to the cell below it if we wanted to. And clearly what we'll see here, oops, it doesn't allow us to do that. Okay? 
So we'll just stay with the min and max functions that we have right now. And in that case, the smallest value is 111,000, and the maximum value is 725,000, so our stems will be 1 and 7. Now, the reason why I couldn't copy the min and max values right here is because when we construct, uh, we trim off the, the numbers here with the left function, you notice how it's left justified. In Excel, left justifies character information. So right now, it's just treating it as a character information. But that's OK. We could still use that for constructing then our stem and leaf plot. So let's go back up here. Our stems will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That represents the tens unit in our trim value. And our leaves are going to be the ones unit. Now, what I'm going to do here is just start to type the formula in. I just close the formula bar so it only shows one line at a time. Equal, repeat. I want to repeat the value 0, comma. Now, how often do I want to repeat it? That's when I'll use the count if function. I'll highlight the entire data range of the trimmed values, comma. And the criteria now I'm going to use is going to be the stems times 10 plus 0. So we see in this case the stem of 1 times 10 is 10. Add 0 to it, that'll be still be 10. So it's going to report any of our trim values here in this cell that have a value of 10. Close parenthesis to close the count if function, and close parenthesis to to close out the repeat function. Now I'm going to expand this because I want to do this for zeros, ones, twos, all the way through leaves of nines for values that have stems of one. I'm going to highlight now the part of the formula I've already entered in, excluding the equal sign. I don't need to repeat that again. Paste. And now let's change this to a value of one is what I want to, want to repeat every time there's a value of 11 in our data. Now you notice when I went there and just pasted it at the end again, it now looks like it deleted part of the formula. It didn't. It just went to the next row. So all I did was then click on this down arrow key to the right-hand side of the formula bar to, to display the, uh, the rows that we have the formula typed into. Now I see that um, what I have here now is a value of 2. 4, 12, which is what I want. I'll paste again that first part. I'll make repeat a value of 3 every time there's a 13. I'll repeat a value of 4 every time there's a 14. And I'll just keep on doing that until I have nine different repeat functions listed out here one at a time for the nine or the 10 leaf, I should say 10 leaf functions, counting 0, for each of the leaves that we have from 10 to 19. We're now on 17. We've got two more. I'll repeat it 8 every time there is an 18. And then I'll repeat a 9 every time there's a 19. So this is just using the repeat and count if functions as we've done in previous tutorials. And I'll get rid of that ampersand at the end. Let me just check, make sure 9, 9, 8, 8, 7, 7, 6, 6, 5, 5, 4, 4, 3, 3. Let's scroll up. 2, 2, 1, 1, 0, 0 looks like I've done it properly and hit enter and yes it worked properly now I'll just take this formula since I have used it oh, what I did not do is put in fixed references for our data I meant to do that right away so if I'd been smart or paying attention and not talking like I am I would have put then the dollar signs um, <coughs> before each of the row numbers here for the data range so that we have a fixed data range. And this will allow me now to copy it down without having to change anything else in the formula. If 
I done it the first time with the first repeat function, we would have been done with our stem and leaf plot. So make sure then your data ranges are fixed. Come down just two more. It's not too much of a problem to fix this, just a little tedious. Okay, now that we've got our formula the way we want it, now I can click and drag and copy this down. And what's going to change now each time is, I'll just double click on one of the cells, is going to be, it's going to multiply the stem for that row by 10. The same thing if we move down to the next row. It's multiplying CF9, the stem of 3 by 10. And that's what it does all the way down through. So here we have our stem and leaf plot. Let me type up the key. That's going to be a 1 slash 1 equals, and I'm going to put out right in 110,000. So the very first value is 110,000. I can type in a uh, title here, figure, um, stem, and leaf plot for house prices. Let me go ahead and change all of my characters here so that I have the font. I like, I'll come down and use Book Antigua. I seem to like to use that these days. I can bold then very easily the title. I will bold and center then the headers for stems and leaves. Let me go ahead and center the stems, which is what's typically done. And I'm also going to put a border between stems and leaves, highlight the cells that contain the stems. And I'm going to come down and choose Format Cells after I choose what I did there very quickly. Highlight the data range that contains stems. Right mouse click in order to open up the options. Choose Format Cells. When the Format Cells windows come up, I'm going to choose the Border tab. Now, right now, the default for a border is a thin solid line. I'll make it a little bit thicker solid line and come down here. I just want to put it only on the right-hand side of all of these cells. And right there you have it, a stem and leaf plot for house prices here, where we've trimmed off the numbers, so we're left with only two numbers in order to construct the stem and leaf plot. Now, if you look at it right here, you notice most of the housing prices are contained in only two bins, that being the stems for 20 and the stems for 30. What I've done previously, before I started recording here, is I created the stem and leaf plot, but I split those leaves up. So now in this case, each stem has only five leaves. The first stem has leaves zero through five, through four rather. The second has uh, five through nine. The next for two has zero through four for leaves, and the next stem for two has then five through nine. So this is how we trimmed the data, and I've also now split the stems.